that's actually very relevant to our part of the world, small annuli, because our patients are petite, and uh, I think industry has been responsive by providing um, devices that are smaller and smaller, but is it really what we need to be doing? So let's just dissect this together. And let's just go on a journey and see what happens to small annuli from surgery to TAVR to valve and valve, because all of these are the same patients that go back and forth, right? So when we look at the data of small annuli, they also have higher rate of perioperative complications when we're looking at the surgical data. And they also have a higher uh, chance of having prosthesis patient mismatch. And so you end up having some residual LV afterload in these patients um, when we eventually see them. But when we do look at the all-cause mortality in these patients, and we look at the Partner 1 trial that really looked at, of course, balloon expandable devices, in patients who had, um, who had small annuli, they had similar rates of moderate to severe um, uh, 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 mismatch, but TAVR was associated with a lower rate uh, compared with SAVR, and this was restricted to patients with the small annuli. So when you look over here, I'm just trying to find my... So when you look at the smaller annuli compared with medium and larger, it was actually the ones with the smaller annuli that they, where there was a significant difference between the surgical and the aortic uh, and the transcatheter implanted valves. And so really when we look at the whole issue here, when you look at small annuli, oops, let me go back. Yeah, so when you look at over here, you look at the annuli, the issue with the small annulus with SAVR is patient prosthesis mismatch, and PDL really is a non-issue. But when you look at TAVR, the prosthesis mismatch is consistent throughout, but it's really the PDL that's an issue that comes with larger annuli compared with the small ones. And we need to take that into consideration when we're looking at our patients. And so when we're looking at the surgical data, and we look at PPM, and you see that severe compared with moderate, you see there's a 1.8-fold increase in the risk of mortality compared with 1.2-fold increase in mortality in those who have um, uh, moderate uh, PPM. And when you look at what does that do? So when you do have patient prosthesis mismatch, what does that translate into in terms of the valve itself and in terms of degeneration of that valve? Well, this is a trial that was published in circulation over a decade ago that looked at 600 surgically implanted valve with a follow-up of six years, and they saw that PPM was an actually an independent risk factor for uh, structural valve degeneration in these patients. And so let's move on to a different category of patients, and these are the valve and valve. So when you look at valve and valve patients, about 10.5% of them have some kind of uh, patient prosthesis mismatch. And what you do see over here is that those with small annuli are more likely than the large and, of course, the medium to have um, a patient mismatch with an increase in the gradient. But they also have a quality of life that is impacted compared with the other valves that are slightly larger. And when you look at the vivid registry that looked at valve and valve, and they looked at outcomes in these patients, and they compared the different types of valves. So they actually looked at balloon expandable, and they looked at self-expanding valves, meaning core valve and the evolute. Once again, what you do see is that those with PPM actually had higher rates of valve degeneration and um, higher gradients. And see, again, over here, this pretty much says the same thing that I showed in the previous one, that patients who do have PPM, the worse it is, the worse the uh, pro valve degeneration is in these patients. So what is the solution when you do have these patients? Well, the solution really lies in several parts. One, we need to consider better surgical prostheses, right? Because we don't want them to have a surgical valve, have valve degeneration, and then they come, and we need to consider TAVR in a already small surgically implanted valve. So the surgical valves and the surgical options are newer generation supraannular bioprostheses that are implant, implanted, stentless bioprostheses, sutureless bioprostheses. These are all options. Unfortunately, these are a lot of them are new, and we don't have very long-term data on these. The other one is aortic root enlargement, which we, we should still be pressing, pressing our surgical colleagues to be doing. And finally, our last option really is transcatheter aortic valve, and I think that is the kind of algorithm that we need to be thinking of. So when we do look at mortality um, in patients with prosthesis mismatch and small annuli, there is, an higher incident, there is a higher rate of cardiovascular mortality in surgically implanted valves with prosthesis mismatch. Now, when you do look at it in TAVR, 
it does not actually affect um, cardiovascular mortality, and this is data that has already been published, and we need to bear that in mind from PARTNER and OCEAN trial. Again, when you look at all these trials, PARTNER, the core valve, et cetera, and when you do want to look at these patients who have significant uh, PPM, and you look at the outcomes in them in terms of mortality, they certainly have a higher mortality hazard compared with those who do not have it. And here, Rebecca Han has some echo core lab data that she published that helps us kind of look through it, and we can see that valves that are actually um, not balloon expandable, but rather self-expanding, tended to have lower gradients, had lower um, effective or orifice uh, area, better effective orifice area, I'm sorry, and then the dimensionless index was actually better in these patients as well compared with the balloon expandable. And again, so when you look at transthoracic echo hemodynamics and you look at structural valve uh, deterioration, they do kind of go hand in hand. Nevertheless, we don't know if that translates into mortality events. So far, the data suggests it does not. And this, again, just re-emphasizes what I just said. But there are studies in the TAVR space that are actually looking specifically at small annuli, and this is one of them, the France TAVR. Um, you know, they looked at a, a whole bunch of patients, and after all the exclusion, they ended up enrolling about 1,100 patients into BEV versus self-expanding valves, and they look at them matched and um, before matching and after matching, and certainly after matching, you can see that in terms of age, gender, et cetera, uh, EF, and so on, they were very well-matched cohorts. Uh, and when you compare them, you, you definitely see a better uh, hemodynamics in the population that is matched and not matched, actually. Um, but you do see that uh, they tend to do better with um, self-expanding valves compared to balloon expandable valves at one year. So the supraannular um, valves at one year had better hemodynamics. They had more, uh, balloon expandable was an independent predictor of one year PPM, and uh, the PPM in itself was a predictor of all cause mortality at three years. And we're still waiting for data because that was more like registry data, but we're looking for randomized data from the SMART trial. And the SMART trial is still enrolling, and effectively they're looking at women as well in that particular trial with Roxana Mehran and colleagues. And it's a one to one stratification where they're looking at both a uh, self expanding valve and a balloon expandable valve. They're going to look at 30 days and then annually for five years to look at important outcomes such as hard endpoints like death stroke, rehospitalization, but as well as um, valve dysfunction. I'm going to skip this for the sake of time, but uh, essentially we're, there's no real data that we know, and a lot of the data is very conflicting about BMI and how it affects the, our decision about small annulus. There are some data that effectively says, yes, um, it does, and some data that is very confounded. So we really don't know where it is, but I would take into consideration BMI when I'm looking at patients' annulus. But what does it mean in very specific populations? And this is data that was published from the Japanese TAVR experience. They are petite patients. What they did find is that small annulus was associated with less hemodynamic improvement and smaller effective orifice uh, uh, area, increased um, PPM in patients at 30 days. Um, but there was no obvious impact on outcomes at 30 days. And superannular devices probably contribute to better hemodynamics. So again, the um, Japanese data is suggesting that there's no real uh, impact on 30-day outcomes, hard endpoints, compared with surgical data. And you know, in the Gulf, we did publish our data because, as I said, our patients are younger. What we did see is a composite of 12.8% of death and rehospitalizations in our patients, and this is looking at all of them, men and women, and looking at small annuli and not small annuli. We found that the predictors of poor outcomes were actually things like chronic kidney disease, um, low ejection fraction, but actually not the small size of the annulus. So that was interesting. Um, again, moderate to severe perivalvular leak was also a, pr a predictor, although it didn't reach statistical significance. But when we looked at women specifically in this registry, what we do see here is that you see the composite was actually higher in men compared than women. Um, and yet, when you do look at cardiovascular hospitalizations, they were higher in women compared with men. Knowing that the smaller sizes, both balloon expandable and self-expanding, were more commonly implanted in women, and yet overall, their outcomes were actually better than the men. 71% um, of those receiving a, received a size 20 transcatheter heart valve, and, uh, which is obviously a... Um, uh, uh, the balloon expandable, and then, tw sorry, 23, which was a balloon expandable, and the 20, which was um, the Medtronic. Um, 
but there was really no difference between the type or size of valve that was selected and the rate of complications between when women in our population. Um, I'm going to end it there, but I think if anything, we still are in the area of where we need to learn more about TAVR and small annuli, particularly in very specific populations and small, smaller patients.